right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are for the Aging Arbors podcast. To be completely transparent, we are recording this and we don't know exactly where it's going to show up in our queue as far as episodes. So we're not going to give it an episode name. That yeah. will happen yeah. in the queue and you'll see that when it's posted up. But what Brick and I decided to do was to give you a little bit more insight into each one of us. Okay. So why are we, or how have we earned the right, so to speak, to speak to the community, to talk to all of you out there that are gracious enough to give your time to listen to what we have to say and what our guests have to say. Um, so we think it's a good idea to just kind of get to know each of us a little bit better, right? So today what we're going to do is we're going to dig in a little bit to Brick's story. I'm going to just ask him some questions and I'm sure a lot of you understand by now, like he and I are friends first. Uh, this whole podcast idea really is an outcropping of that, right? Like it's, it's two friends getting together, having some conversation, inviting other friends and colleagues and things of that nature in to have these type of discussions. So this conversation will be sort of natural flow. This is how he and I talk when we connect, whether it's on FaceTime or at a comp, at a conference, whatever. So I'm just going to roll out. Um, this is Brick Riley. This is my friend. Uh, this is a man who's a great dad, a husband, um, a worker, uh, a leader in his, in his community, in his family, in his place of work, in the local arboricultural community, in the climbing community. Um, he's a man, and this is just completely my perspective. I'm not trying to embarrass him. He's a man who operates with a core set of principles, honesty, integrity. Uh, he's a man of his word. He's a man I don't have to guess about what he feels or thinks. It's one of the reasons I like him. I do not want a bunch of yes men in my life. I want someone that's going to challenge me to be the best version of myself, which doesn't always mean we're going to be in agreement. Okay. So there's a lot of alignment, but that doesn't mean we agree. And I'm perfectly comfortable with this man sitting across from me, looking me looking me in the eye and going, hey man, listen, I don't know that that's the best course of action or I think you're way off base here. <clears throat> um, these are the conversations I welcome from a man and a friend like Brick. So ladies and gentlemen, this is my buddy, Brick Riley. Uh, <laughs> you know, you hear it a lot, but that is a really cool intro. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, of course. I'm honored, you know, obviously to sit across from you. Um, I think the biggest thing is, I just want to start off with is, the things that you just said about me is also the same that I will be saying about you as well. And um, the alignment, I won't go right into it. Yeah. Alignment comes from not agreement, but being able to talk to each other along the way. You know, not very yet. much like I said, there's, uh, you know, a top of a, a mountain, the mm -hmm. ridge line. Yep. There's two sides to it. And it's not always easy to stay on, on the ridge line. Um, but yeah, I, I I feel like I want to hit that right off the bat to let the listeners know <clears throat> um, anybody, myself included, mm -hmm. is not to be put on a pedestal. Yeah. There's always a work in progress. Yep. And, that, and that's it. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's a great. And it's funny because I know you've been, you've been kind of on, on a little bit of a hiking journey, right? So you've been doing some hiking. And yeah. what I love about what we do. And, and again, this is where you and I, there's some alignment here too, but I think a lot of folks listening that are in this trade for a period of time, we draw a lot of wisdom and metaphor, analogy from nature, 100%. right? From the trees, from how the, everything relates to one another. But that ridgeline theme of like, that ridgeline is a peak. It's a fine sort of delineation. Mm -hmm. But when you look at that mountain from both sides, there are clearly our two sides to it. So oh, I, I love how yeah. you, I love how you did that. Yeah. And to dive a little deeper, the yeah, ridge line, is, <laughs> exactly. yeah. the ridge line, what I love about that is exactly what you said, but more importantly, as everybody should, either they do know or they should know the ridge line also means the top, the summit, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yep. And it is not the most forgiving place. You can't stay there. Yeah. I don't care where you are. I mean, Takes you can talk about, you know, the biggest mountain in the world, Mount yep, Everest, yep, yep. but even the one I just uh, hiked <clears> with <throat> my brother-in-law and his buddies and my cousin, mm -hmm. um, 
it's the same concept. Like you get up there, you can't stay there. The weather changes super quick. Yep. You got some challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the trees are small, so there's no windbreak. Wow. Uh, there's really no good flat area to set up camp. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a great, um, you know, and we'll dive into it deeper, but it's a great way to remind yourself that it's nice to be up there, but it's also nice to have the two sides on every issue possible. You, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. have, enjoy all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, you know, you're making me or prompting a thought <clears throat> in, in my mind. It's a segue into a question is what, what's the advantage what is an advantage? I think you did touch on it, but what is an advantage of being on the ridge line? Like, what do you see as an advantage of making that journey? So you're going up one of the sides uh-huh. and you, you sort of reach the summit. What, what are a couple of benefits that you feel figuratively and metaphorically, yeah. all right, of going to the summit of anything? Like just, you know what I'm saying? I, I do. I know exactly yeah, yeah. what you're saying. So, um, I'm going to try to tie this into personal, you know, yeah. On, yeah and on a personal level. Um, so, yeah. So basically and you, you I'll probably need your help in this to kind of keep it cohesive okay. so people understand it yeah, better, yeah. but talking about my, uh, being born deaf. Okay. Um, some people do know the new listeners don't, but I was born profoundly deaf. Um, my mom didn't find out until I was two years old. Wow. My mom was also 18 when she had me. Um, the reason why I bring that up is because, because of the deafness and the decision that my mom made to have me be a part of mainstream, which means I was the only one in my community, only one in my family, and only one amongst my friends and school and name it. And any time it meant that I was the only one. Um, that comes with a host of challenges. You know, if you're a parent, yeah. you know, like yourself, hundred percent, you want the best for your child, mm-hmm. obviously, but essentially you also can't have the best for your child without a struggle being a part of it, where the struggle is either on the child, like myself, sure. or it's on the parent, meaning you want to make the perfect life for them. You can't do, to, do that. They have to do it themselves. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, my experience as a deaf person trying to navigate through that is very similar to navigating up a mountain to get to the summit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, when you get to the summit, you get to enjoy the views. Mm-hmm. So whenever I would accomplish something deaf related or anything like that, I didn't really get to enjoy the views too much because I always had to get back to work. Sure. Which is, and this is where it gets to it. So I had to get back to work and accomplishing another task or another goal. Um, but in doing that, I had, I knew early on that I had to have something that what I just learned was something that I could stand. It was part of the foundation that I could stand on. Okay. I have no problem adjusting my beliefs or uh, goals based on learning something new that is factual first of all, and it's, you know, um, uh, experimented by myself. So if you tell me something like this is a principle, I believe you 100% based on a relationship. However, I still want to experience it in life with that principle yep. to test it. Trust, but verify. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Great principle to live by. 100%. And it helps you own it, right? Like and you're like, hey, it, yeah. Paul or this person said X, Y, Z. Man, that's really cool that that's a truth. Let me see how it applies to me and let me stretch it out and, and poke at it, it and is, see where the boundaries of yeah, it are. It exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and literally put, put it to the test, yeah. so to speak. So every time I was, so back to the ridge line, yep. every time I get this feeling right away, it's like, oh, you got to go back down, back to the healing world. No, you got to go to the deaf world. Uh, some listeners that don't know, I'm half black, half white. I also went between both worlds because of family wow. relationships okay. back to the black world back to the white world you, this world can't talk to that world the hearing world can't talk to the deaf world but you're not doing a good job in school you're gonna have to stay back you can't be with your friends you have your friend or new friends it's always just constant back and forth so i've always had to be pulled either go in one direction to test it test what i learned or I have to go in that direction because i have to but then i would navigate my way back to the ridge line but i 
I always learned that each side always has a natural pull to it. Um, but and it's it's in my mind, it's not, it's not so much that one side is right or wrong, but sure. it's just that each side has pros and cons that offers something to strengthen the principle that I just created by doing the climb myself. Yep. Dude, it's crazy because I see that it's interesting that you draw that polarity sort of between the, the, the worlds, the cultural worlds of black and white, the, the hearing, the deaf that many of us don't even have to deal with. Uh, I just find that's a fascinating, you know, that, that, and that's that fine point. Um, one of the things that popped up, and this is just a natural progression of what you're saying, is when you say, you know, you, you accomplish something, say like in the hearing world or whatever, and then you, you had to, I think the word, you, I don't know if you said retreat back, but go back. Yeah. So what, what would be one thing, like as you were coming up, um, you know, struggling with that part of life, right? Like being mainstreamed. Um, so what, first of all, let me back up. What would the alternative have been? A, like a deaf school, like a school for the deaf where you would have done all your work? In, in, is that? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So, so the general way that things can work are just, you know, for lack of a better way of explaining it, there really yep. are only two choices. Okay. Uh, there's deaf community and then uh, um, it's a listening and spoken language community. Basically meaning there are technology, hearing aids or cochlear implant to supplement your ability yep. to be a part of and and you know this is where this is where things get weird yeah so no have, it's all good yeah so you have yeah. america uh, it's a world society too but let's just stick with america you have a society and society society operates a certain way mm -hmm. and it operated ways and, and it slowly changes based on things uh happening totally normal you know we can go back from like women women that didn't have rights at sure. one point yep. and then that's changed yep. and it's all so every subject can be relatable in that way and being born deaf into this world is also the same thing so right off the bat a parent or a family is stuck with an option or a choice yeah and once again one or the other is not right or wrong, yep. even though, depending on who you talk to, they'll tell you what's right or wrong. Of course, as with any topic. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that, we, know, we know that in this community, to just pivot to tree, Yeah. I mean, post up a video of doing something that, you and, know, and, and, you, the, and, the, and the flood of comments, yeah, and, and it's, it's like, just like, dude, what, hold time out, time out. Yeah. Are we lifting, lifting each other up? Yeah. Elevating each other? Oh, are we, you're right. I'm wrong. You're yeah. right. No, I'm right. I got this. And, but to that point, yep. it's, it is the same. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, um, the deaf community believes in sign language. It's a language. Which sure. It is. And most yep. people might not see it that way, but it's a language that can be used by a group of people that is easier to use it, to be a part of because you're using your hands to communicate when you cannot hear. Yep. No brainer, right? Yep. Good. However, society doesn't care that you're deaf. Right. Society's going to just roll on. It's going to do what it's going to do. It's going to do what it does. And the majority is always going to be more or less the forward leading say on what things are going to happen. Sure, sure. And the majority of people are hearing people. Right. Yep. So a majority of businesses, a majority of jobs, a majority of schools, is always going to be of course in that frame. Yep. Now, I won't, you know, I, and I'm not, you know, I don't tiptoe around anything. Sure. So I'll yeah, say yeah. Flat out, yep. like I have no problem with the deaf community choosing sign language, but the challenge is that yes, you got what works for you, but now you have to turn around and you have to pivot into whatever profession you're going to, a school that you're going to, and now you have a, another set of problems that you may or may not be able to overcome because you had a situation that caters but supports your lack of hearing ability. Right. Yeah. It supports it, and I'm all for it. Yep. But I'm very grateful that my mom went with the choice of listening and spoken language and and the reason, and again, she'd be the best person to really dive into it, but the way it works is both sides of my family never had a deaf person. Wow. 
So it's not a, it's not a thing that, yeah. Hey, we know what to do. Yeah. So naturally when somebody with, with a brand new problem, you reach out to people. Yep. So a good friend of my mom was a teacher, knew people, and then connected her with a, a school, Summit Speech School. My mom goes to talk to the executive director. The executive director is like, hey, do options. This is what we want to do. We want listening to spoken language. We believe in it. Technology, speech therapy, whatever we have to do to help this child, to give, an, in their mind, an equal opportunity to be a part of society. That's what we're trying to do. Yep. And there's the other option. If this, this is also an option for you because the child might struggle in school. So if you bring him to, it's, uh, it's in Mountain Lakes, which is, I believe it's almost two hours away. Mm. As a yeah. parent, think about that. Oh, yeah. Child's four years old, yep. six years old, seven years old, <laughs> two hours one way, two hours home. So, but the idea is that there's tools there that will help the child be able to meet friends, con- connect, communicate, yep. and all that. So she went with the listening spoken language, which I am grateful for. Good. 100%. Cool. That's awesome. But it does not come without its challenges. I can imagine, dude. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And it's one of those things like, you know, we've talked about this often in different realms, Mm -hmm. right? There are certain things in life that unless you experience, and I always go to the parenting one, right? Like you're a parent, you're not a parent one minute and you, you have a lot to say about what parents do. And then you are a parent in a moment and paradigm shift. And no one that is not a parent will have, it's, you're not dealing with any of it. You have no idea. And, and this is one of those things like I can, I can empathize and I can say, man, that must have been hard. And I can try to imagine, but, but there's no way of really knowing what yeah, that's no, like. There really yeah. is. And, and, you know, that, that is, I would imagine, the challenge with everything. Yeah. Is that other, the other side yep. can't really know. Of course. They can empathize and everything else. Yep. But to, the knowing part is, I mean, it's huge. I mean, yeah. we agree on that. Yeah. Um, with that being said, um, I think that, uh, and I, I know, I don't think, I know that that is um, how, all right, let me, back. I know that we're all born with a certain personality. Yep. And then it gets to thrive in a situation. Yep. So I do believe your personality can also, it does also, be, you know, get molded based on your experiences and what you deal with in life. So it's not like, oh, you're born this way, and then that's why it works for you. Yep. Like, you know, you have a choice again. Sure. Um, and as I, you know, went through the listening spoken language world, mm-hmm. that um, introduce, there we go, introduce, you know, when, when you start coming of age, a young adult, and started introducing um, an opportunity even though most people won't look at it that way, but it was an opportunity of like, okay, who are you? Who, who do you want to be? Yeah. I mean, that's what's going to come down to. So are you, I mean, are you going to be a complainer, a victim? As yeah. we talk in, you know, the yeah. uh, Mark Chisholm uh, podcast or uh, episode, are you going to be that person? Or are you going to be the person that's going to put the work in? Yep. And it's not going to, it's not going to be pleasant. No. It's going to suck. Yeah. It's gonna suck a lot, especially from where I, where I was coming from. Not yeah. not being able to really be connected. Yep. Now I got to find a way to connect. Yep. And um, that is, it, and that's kind of the genesis of how I got into trees. Yep. Let me just please, let me just because I definitely want to go there. On your that's finger. on the docket a thousand percent. <laughs> but um, oh man, did I just lose my train of thought? Oh, I had the advantage of knowing you. Right. A yes, little better yeah. than a lot of folks that are probably listening. Um, and again, you know me, I'm not just going to blow smoke to blow smoke, but knowing you and knowing what I know about you and the achievements you've had in the industry, but also like to me, just like as a dude, like just as a guy, right. That someone that I'm friends with. Um, and I think this is important to touch on because of conversations that we have a lot about life struggle. Um, suffering, triumph, you know, forging attitudes and, and through those struggles and things. Um, we talked about that with Mark, uh, you know, and I have this principle thing that I wrote about and I talked about it in that episode about breaking down muscles and they build stronger and so forth and so on. Knowing you the way I know you, 
don't know you're complete. Like I'm learning some things even now because we're, we're taking the opportunity to go a little bit deep, which we've done before, but every time you hear it, you learn something new. Um, I, I see the benefits in you from a character standpoint and the person that you are as a, and I don't know you totally as a dad, but as a dad, husband, friend, competitor, I see the benefits of the struggle, right? So like you decided, and there, I'm sure at times in those struggles, it's, it's hard to pull your bootstraps up. It's hard. It's like, man, like, where do I go from here? You know, or, okay, I, I, I made this achievement and like, and now I'm going backwards or whatever. Sitting on the other side of it, it's obvious to me that the struggle is a large part of what shaped you and you're not one really to complain or be a victim or whatever. And I, I think it's very, very important. And there's some guys I follow that, you know, have had different types of struggles, but it's almost a, it's a huge part of their origin story. Sure. Right? It's like, I dealt with all this and no, this was not fun. And I'm not saying there aren't still challenges in life. I'm not saying that at all, but it's very obvious to me as your friend that this experience has, I mean, that's an assessment I'm making. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. You're, you see it, you feel on. it, you know it, right? No, like, yeah, you, yeah. Spot on. Yeah. I mean, uh, to the point I'll even say, uh, I wouldn't be here without it. Yeah. You know, I know it sounds cheesy, no, but I it's get like, it. I, not only, let me let me rephrase. Not only without it, but without taking it and doing something with sure. it. Sure, put it that yeah. way. That that sounds better. Yep, you know, one hundred percent. Yep. So you know? I'll tell you, I'll, what I'll do is I'm just going to jump on your segue because yeah. <clears throat> I want people to know. And I've heard the story before, but I I need to hear it again. The tree situation. So you got in. You said something to the effect of this is part of how I got in. So walk me through that early phase of yeah. okay. I saw tree work. And no, no, I got, I, I got, no. Okay, walk well, no, no, yeah, go, got it. go, so, go. I'm tapping out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. No, it was good. It's like, uh, it, it's like WWE. Yeah. Tapping in. Yeah. Um, no, so that's why I kind of, you know, I'm, tr I'm learning, all right, I, I'm learning to, it sounds weird. I'm learning to embrace the deafness because my whole life is about separating myself from the deafness. Okay. Yep. Still is. Sure. Okay. But I'm learning to embrace it so I can tell the story better. Okay. Okay. Um, as a kid, all of us, as kids, and I've probably said this many times, but all of us, if I, if I mention, think of a tree that you climbed as a kid. Okay. Yep. Um, I, w I would say 100% of the people on this planet pretty much did exactly the thing. Three doors down, sweet gum tray, backyard next to my friend's swimming pool. Beautiful. Boom. Love it. And, and About almost down to the location, yep. the whole night. Exactly. I can almost remember the limb structure because I went up and down it so many times. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that right there, just keep that thought in mind. Yep. The listeners and yourself. So, then we grow up. So we'll go from, you know, let's say, you know, little, uh, you know, five, six, four, five, six, seven years old. That's mm -hmm. kind of probably yep. around the range of what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Then you get to elementary school, towards the end of elementary school. Some people are still doing it, but then some people kind of moved on to like sports. There's, sure. Yep. Well, name it. I mean, it's just... It, I'm not climbing a tree, like, you know, because now we're bigger, we can get up higher, right? Um, not me, still doing it. But the difference is, I didn't, I wasn't aware of this yet, but I know that the reason why I was doing it because to fill the void that I had, not being able to be a part of my community, of my friends and school, name it. So I didn't realize it at this time. It wasn't until later. But the thing is, there's an emptiness. A sadness, pain that I need to have something that gives me the sense of, and again, it sounds cheesy, but of purpose. Like I can do something that makes me feel, feel good. Nobody else has to understand it. I don't need to explain it to anybody else. That's what it became for me at that point. Interesting. For, exactly. Towards the end of elementary school into high school. Yep. You know what's crazy? It's yep. a big deal. And it's, it's weird because, and you didn't have to deal with this. This is a strange juxt juxtaposition that I just thought of. Yeah. I go up a tree like that, like when I'm a young kid and I'm climbing, I'm doing it to escape things 
and to be in a quiet place. Interesting. And here, you have plenty of quiet. Oh, yeah, plenty like there's quietness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, no, no, no. You maybe know, that's corny, I, but no, no, no. But I, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I do, and I love yeah. how you said that because because of my quietness. Yeah. I'm trying to find something that gives me something that like I really because and again I I'm really careful in how I articulate this number one because I have my kids sure and I don't want my kids to know the sadness and depth of that sadness interesting okay because we want to protect your kids right absolutely there's part of my past my kids don't know about they know some things and they know yeah. vaguely but they don't need to know the details. they don't need no detail no. but I'm, I'm going to say it on the podcast there's enough of that that not uh not wanting to be here on this planet normal okay that that's the normal underlying experience as a deaf person okay. navigating the mainstream wow that's heavy never goes away that's wow okay keep that yeah okay now hey, i'm learning yeah so hmm. um uh it, elementary school now we're doing manhunt you know not high school but now yeah. we're running you know yeah, kids, dude, we're starting jailbreak hanging out. And yeah, yeah. Playing, yeah yeah playing football in the streets yep, you know yep. the 80s kids and that, you oh, know yeah. even for you guys but like the ideas are, were out there but now i'm like now i'm pushing the limits yep i'm you know like i'm using the trees as an escape like yourself but as an escape to try to counteract that feeling of not wanting to be here yeah okay yeah so, no i'm i'm tracking okay so high school now, now, and you know, I'll ask you a question and hopefully it helps, but like, what percentage of the people do you think are still climbing trees? Now, mind you, no, no, tree, we're not talking about ropes, harness, no, no exposure yeah, just, to tree no, industries. I, yep. I don't even see, I don't even know about the existence nope. of arboriculture, no. tree companies, nothing. Yep. So what would be the percentage of people that are still climbing trees the way we did as kids? Are we talking, you're at what age now? You're talking 15? Uh, well, yeah, high school. So we was, uh, I think it's 14, 18, let's say 17. Yeah, man. But let's just do it. It's it's probably. I mean, if it's one percent, I'd be like we. It, what we would do is we would go somewhere and I'll just say it this way: like party, yeah, party. And, it, and it would be yeah. in the woods, yeah. and a couple guys might run up a tree, and 100%. the other guys would stand there and look and laugh and in love. exactly. But you yeah. know, maybe there's twenty guys, maybe one or two guys is going up. Yeah, it's being knuckleheads. But it's just being knuckleheads. Yeah, being knuckleheads. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with you. Yep. So, but this knucklehead is taking it to the next level. The level of, at this time, this isn't. Um, there's. Uh, it's called parkour now. Oh yeah, parkour, free yeah, yeah, running, yeah. parkour, yep. and that kind of stuff. But that wasn't a thing. Yep. Uh, we didn't have phones back then, so it wasn't like internet, and it, you see all yeah. this stuff. So, but that's what I was doing now. It wasn't good enough just to get high in the tree, like get up there. Yeah. Now yeah. it's like well, swinging if I around, jumping. No, no swinging around because there's nothing to swing on. It's okay. Jumping. Right. I'm saying you're like. Oh, oh yeah yeah okay yeah, like, I, don't, yeah. I just want to give the yeah, listeners yeah. Like, swinging no... off of one branch and l yes. launching through the air exactly, and, like, exactly. grabbing another branch. Right, but now now 30 probably like 30 40 feet by the trunk mm -hmm. and then jumping tr trunk to trunk or oh, trunk to branch okay yeah yeah now now adding that sense of parkour yeah but the real reason which kind of come to a conclusion later on in life but the real reason is because that just climbing a tree wasn't doing what it, it did before about not wanting to be here. Yep. Now I had to do that to counteract the same feeling yep. because as we know, when you get to high school, it's a very challenging time. No doubt. Social skills, mm -hmm. communication. Uh, now, um, it's nasty enough without dealing with you, with what you were dealing with. Exactly. And I also want to reiterate, I didn't, and I'll get into it later, but I didn't get the cochlear implant until I was 22. I was, I was going to, I was going to be a question. So, for sure. Yeah. So it, uh, and I'll dive into it more understanding why, right. but the idea is that I had a hearing aid pretty much didn't do much uh, at all, you know? Um, so I have that as well. So now I'm like doubling up on my risky, uh, aerial, you know, performance yep. just to fulfill that same, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That same. Like fulfillment. Like fulfillment, uh, yes. And yeah. to me, it sounds like almost like there's a chemical issue there. It's a, it's a dopamine. It's, yes. it's an adrenaline. It's the stress chemicals. It's, you know, oh, you're, you're naturally medicating through the yeah. work that you're doing 100%. and your body got used to a certain level. And by, by ramping up the limits or whatever, now you're pushing those levels yeah. up and you're getting, 
you got more you, of the stuff. Yeah, and and the only reason why I had to ramp it up was because life changes yeah. as as a kid as you grow up. Yep. You know, like my daughter's twelve; she's going through stuff now, and like it's just it's normal. I mean, oh, all yeah. that is normal, dude. Hundred percent. But that also is the reason why things had to ramp up. Yep. Because there's more of natural yeah. things that I got to deal with. Um. So without going too forward and too fast, but now that turns into college. Now I'm in college. And again, this is, you know, I've learned, I've learned to you know, unpack it a little bit, yeah. but most of it, I, I take full ownership of my approach to life. I wasn't advocating for myself. I was doing the opposite because I never wanted to be identified as a deaf person. That was my whole thing. Like I can do it. I've been trained. This is what you do. Follow this path. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. So I've always been like, okay, cool, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. But I never wanted to be identified as a deaf person because I was the only one all the time. Right. It's frustrating. Yeah. So I get to college, what are you supposed to do? You should advocate for yourself because now your parents can't help you, your teacher can't help you, your speech therapist can't help you, your sign language interpreter can't help you. You're on your own. You should be able to speak for yourself. Yeah. I didn't. I chose to go the other way, which meant a lot of partying, not really going to classes, going even more crazier in these adventures out in the woods. Now it's turning into jumping off 40 foot cliffs into trees. It's jumping out of a tree into rivers. It's turning, it's an amazing experience. Like I look back on it, I'm like, that was pretty cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Pretty cool, but it terrifies me if my kids want to take the same path. Yeah, that is not the path I want for my kids. Yep. No, you, I get it. You know what I mean? I do. So <clears throat> it gets to I end up dropping out of college because obviously my decision makings were not mm -hmm. the best ones. You mind me asking what you were in? What were you uh, in for? Like, uh, I went to Montclair State University. Okay. Yep. Yeah, went Montclair State University. Um, again, went in undecided. Yep. I did have very much like a, what Mark Chisholm spoke about being. A, 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 my my goal was to be a personal trainer for the okay. New York Jets football team. Oh, there you go. Very that, specific. I li yeah, that literally was That's like cool, that would have been that if I. Yeah. If I had my head screwed on right and was able to advocate for myself, that was the path I wanted to be in. Like um, Tim, Tim Grover, mm -hmm. we oh, yeah. talk about it, like winning, yeah, yeah, you win. know, um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah um, it was Kobe Bryant, and, yeah, uh, yeah, and Michael Jordan, like that. I and I can't say because I didn't do it, but that that is the person I would have turned into. Yeah. Not just a trainer for you and your body, but as a personal development coach for your mind to use that body to become a champion. I had that. You're that, still young. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, for real. It is definitely something that is still in the works, so to speak. Yep. Um, not working on it actively, but it's, it's just because I'm not in it doesn't mean I'm not planning. I'm making a part of the plan in the future. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I appreciate the, yeah, for sure. which, oh, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. More, more importantly, I appreciate the spark because it just, this, this is a spark for that. Oh, right on. Good. I mean, honestly, like yeah. I, I see it almost as a natural progression. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, drop out. And this is where family, this is where I, I want to reiterate several times throughout here, but the family really comes in clutch because yeah. every time I have an issue, my family has always, my mom's side of family has always been, um, a pillar in making sure I never hit the ground. That's awesome. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. They may never really understand, like you were saying before, they can empathize, but never really understand what I'm going through. They've always tried to uh, offer um, opportunities and situations to, you know, whether it's talking to a therapist or, you know, seeing, talking to this person, or whatever it was, they always put something there, be like, try this and see if this helps. Yep. And the first thing that happens after I have this very deep emotional conversation with my family, say I'm dropping out of college, um, was go talk to the executive director who has since passed away was Claire Cantor, who was the executive director at Summer Speech School when I was there as a preschool kid. And my mom made a decision to go mainstream. Yep. I went to talk to her. Their hope was that I would go back to school after talking to her. But what it ended up being was I ended up working at that school as a teacher assistant with the deaf and hard of hearing kids that were from three to six years old with other learning disabilities as well. And you're twenty something uh, at this point. I uh, yeah, no, ninety uh, nine um yeah ninety ninety nine. So two, right before two thousand. Okay. So, yeah. So two thousand two thousand and one, and a little bit of two thousand and two. Okay. Um, so I go in, we talk, and sit down. She's like, "Tell me, I remember you when you were a little baby, this and that." Wow. 
wild. Blew my mind. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool to see her dedication for that school. I mean, we're talking same thing about like business owners. Like she was like the operation of that that school for well over. I'm not sure, but I want to say close to forty years. Wow. That was her mission in life to make sure kids have an equal opportunity in American society, hearing society. That's cool. I mean, I, you yeah, know, that that's woman her calling. Yeah. 100%, yeah. you know? So it, the funny thing is the conversation started like, Hey, what's going on? I'm like, Oh man, I'm all messed up. And I, I don't know, you know, this and that, you know, well, why don't you just hang out in the classroom? We have a, um, a two way window in each classroom where parents can observe, but why don't you go hang out in there and sit in there and see what happens? I go in, in the one room with a teacher, uh, her name is Barbara. But she's like, yeah, just sit behind the kids. We'll do it. And it's all the preschool stuff. So, yeah. you know, and uh, I remember being looking around. This is the crazy part, which I might tear up. <clears throat> um. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. good, man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So did you, is this because like you recognized yourself in these kids kind of thing? Or you, yeah. you, you went right back and like, remember? No, no, that's it. Wow. Yeah. So, um, oh, dude. I got you, brother. No, I know you do it. <laughs> I don't, you know me. I don't care yeah. about vulnerability. Nah, it's good. Uh, yeah. Vulnerability is awesome. Yep. Um, I just want to be able to articulate. Still, is, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's the first time. I just said I was the only one all those years. It's the first time that I'm like, hey, that's me. That's me. Wow. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You made but, a, you made a connection. Like I mean, you mentally. As soon as I walk in and sat down and, and Barbara was teaching, I saw a hearing aid in plant hearing aid, implant, you know? And yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm home. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. So the first time I didn't have, this is what emotion called. I didn't have the, uh, I don't want to be here feeling anymore. Wow. That's pretty cool. So that, <laughs> yeah. that was like a page turn kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. So Could've. it was, so I'm assuming, <laughs> and I'm, I'm jumping ahead of you. Go ahead, go for it. Yeah. But is that, and I'm sure this is where you're going. Is, yeah, it, is yeah. this is this now a catalyst? Is this is this a turning point? A hundred percent. Okay. A hundred percent. Because that feeling, and it's not a quick. Remember, I said it never goes away. Sure. But now, I, I the first time I have a sense of like, oh, I belong here. Yeah. I can do something. With it. Yep. I don't know what. I don't know how. I don't know where. You know, I'm. I just dropped out of school. My family is kind of concerned. Right. Now I'm sitting in a classroom with preschool kids. Yeah. And I feel at home. What do you do with that? You're like, well, yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say that. What do I do with this? Yeah, yeah. what do I do? So yeah. I have no idea, but I do know, like, I, I, I get it now. Like, yep. I'm not sure what it is, but I get it enough to know, like, okay, I, we, I did have the feeling of, like, I knew I made the right choice leaving school. Yeah. That it was not a good place at this point, you know, me- mentally. Yep. So, um, I end up, I go, I, I leave there, leave the classroom. I go back to talk to her and she's like, oh, so you want to volunteer? And I said, no, I want to work here. I need a job. I would like to work here. She's like, well, we're not really hiring anybody or anything. I said, I understand, but I want to work here. Like, that's all. And she goes, you know what? Fine. You're a teacher assistant. You start, I think it was like, uh, whatever to say. I think I remember I dropped out of like January. So it was like the second semester of that year. Yep. So I probably started in February. So you, fine, you start this date. And I'm like, all right, what do I have to do? She's like, no, fill out paperwork and blah, 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 whatever. And I'm like, all right. And then that, that was my journey. Put it, it was like just over a year and three quarters. Best time ever. Wow. Best time of my life because that's when I learned I'm not alone. Not the only one. You know what I mean? Yep. So now, so I just want to, I no, need to hit the please. pause. Yeah. And this is what I'm saying. And you, I think this is where you're at, but you tell me. So you didn't, you did that school for a period, but you were mainstreamed and in that, right. Yeah, you got, yeah. In that mainstream environment, trying to be deaf, navigating all that yeah. created a, a big sense of aloneness. Yeah. Terrible. Right. Yeah, so terrible. going back now, you're like, I'm kind of among people that get it. Preschool. Kids, right. So, that's the funny. No, I get it. But like, but then you see yourself in that. And yeah, so, yeah. so this is like, all right, it's, it's kind of like a, you can take a breath now for a minute. Yeah. Is exactly. that, Yes. Okay. Exactly. And that, I'm just and trying that, to like summarize. No, no, you, you said it perfectly. Yeah, and that's when I say I'm, I'm home. Yep. That's what I meant. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I've never felt like, yeah, I love my family. I love my mom. Sure, like, don't get me course. wrong, but like, I never, like, I was able to feel at home. Yep. Because even though 
they t- took care of me, took care of everything. I've always had a sense of like no connection. Like there's nothing. I do. There's nothing your, there. Your parents and family are assisting and aiding in the struggle, but they're not sharing in it from the standpoint of being, being in the actual in the, death yes struggle. And that is where the pro or the benefit of the deaf community comes into play. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I do. Both, both sides of the mountain. There you go. There's pros and cons. Yep. Yeah, Very but, important. Yeah, we'll no. probably return to that point, but that's where it's like, yes, you with sign language, yes, you get to be a part of a community that's going to make you feel at home and you're going to struggle in society, but you're going to have a hard, you, you know what I mean? It's going to be a hard struggle because you're, you're comfortable at home. Where my, and again, I'm so happy she did, but she made a decision like, no, like he can do this. We'll figure it out. But that came with loneliness of not being able sure. to connect with anybody. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Got it. All right. <laughs> um, so back to how we got into the trees. So I returned back there, worked with them, still climbing, doing all my crazy stuff in the woods. Go camping in Massachusetts with my buddies, doing the same thing in Massachusetts. Because it doesn't, everywhere I go, do the same thing. Because now everybody's still in the party mindset. And my thing was. In the what? A party, party mindset. Oh, party, 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 party. Yeah, 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 yeah. Words, I you got know? you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful yep. place, yep. everything, but party mindset. Yeah. Because some people graduated college already, so it's kind of like this, this period of like, yep. oh, dude, great. Let's do, you know, and then, you know, so it's still a party mindset, but I've always had the mindset of I'm doing this stuff first to, to fill that, you know, yep. that, the feeling that I have. And then I'll party. I don't sure. have a problem with it, but like, yep. I can't do that. Like I'm not, I, I have, I have to do something, Yep. you know? So I do the thing, jumped tree to tree, 60 feet in the air, miss, miss it actually, hit a couple branches, grab it again. Now I'm all scuffed up, big deal, no big deal. Come down, go back to where my buddies are, put my hearing aid back in. So are these guys watching any of this? They're, and they're pissed off. My buddies, my, my buddies could not stand it when I was doing this stuff. Cause they're like, I'm gonna have to call your mom after you kill yourself. Oh, okay. After I you see. miss and die, Yeah, they're like, we have to go like, you're, you're an asshole. Like, you're an asshole. Like, stop doing this stuff. So, I, I, meant, I forgot to mention it. Along the way, none of them wanted me doing this. Okay. This isn't a thing. Like, at first, it was like when it was, you know, just this, this, the trunk and back down. Right. Didn't matter. But when it became parkour, they were pissed. But, interesting. You being pissed off and me feeling lonely. Yep. You're going to have to be pissed off. Yeah. I can't, you know what I mean? Like, I can't yeah. worry about how you feel when I know what I feel. It's put me in a bad mind, mindset, in a bad place. Yep. So you're going to have to be pissed off. That was always been my thing. So I do the thing, come down to, of course, they're doing the same stuff. Yeah. yeah. We're doing the same stuff. And um, I walk over, put my hearing aid back in, and an older guy, never met the dude, random guy walking his dog through the woods, watched me do it. I didn't, I wasn't aware of this, but watched me do it come back and you know, I remember when I had my hearing aid, I wasn't a good communicator. I didn't catch everything. So I, I always relied on my friends. I was always the dude just behind my friends, let them do all the talking and then them would kind of me and back I, yeah, to, to keep me up to speed. And, uh, but I was able to know enough to know that he said, it, like what you just did, I mean, wow, but not cool. Like uh, he didn't say not cool, but basically I'm, I'm I'm paraphrasing, not cool, because you can die doing that. I hope you know that you can get a job doing this with rope and a saddle. And I'm like, that's weird. I'm like, I've never seen it. You know, I don't know what you're talking, I have no idea what you're talking about. Wow. But one thing about me is anytime somebody says something, but kind of what we first started off with, if you tell me something about a principle or a truth, I'll, I won't necessarily take it yeah. and be like, hey man, Paul said it, so it's cool. Right. I believe you yep. and I'm cool with it, but I also want to test it and mess with it myself and see what's up. So guys like, hey, you know, cool, nice to meet you, walks away, uh, forget about it. But out of curiosity, I come home, check on the computer. And this, this is uh, AOL days where you're typing in and you have to wait. Now I can't hear, so I don't know what the sounds were, <laughs> but I know it was very long to get on. Oh yeah. Right? Yep. Uh, dial up. Oh yeah, dude. Um, you mean you missed all the dial-up sounds? Yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. A, there's a whole sound to it, oh, I know, but oh, yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But um, I started putting, as soon as I get home, I'm like, let, let me just sit. And I ended up falling, uh, stumbling onto horticulture and orbiculture. 
that's those are the two words that kind of yep. uh, and, and not even the culture too, my holder culture was really the word that yep. was I guess that's how it was said in, in the beginning. Yeah. Before well, arbor culture. Well I think what it is is there there was arbor culture and there is arbor culture. I mean I had Shy Go's book Modern Arbor Culture quite a few years back. Uh, okay. So the word was there, but to me it was always like the uh like I mean this is gonna sound terrible, but like the illegitimate little person Step like like yeah, yeah like yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. it's a horrible way to say it but like yeah there was horticulture everybody knows that word but it's like arbor culture like what you yeah know, that's even a thing yeah so. it, and speaking to your point i remember that was horticulture was really the thing that was like yeah. okay yep and when when i read up on it and it said what he said that guy that i'd never know his name i never met him we yep. never met him that's it that guy literally changed the tra- trajectory of my journey that's crazy so i'm like i know what to do so yep. I'm I'm going into the horticulture industry, um, and at that time, because of how my life was, it was always based on people, you know, my family, school, mm-hmm. friends, and I, instead of like um, learning on my own or going to people and talking, I talk to you and be like, "Yo, this is what I want to do." You just if you know people, talk to them. So, you know, I know what Brooke wants to do, and my buddy talks to his uncle who retires from Union County DPW and knew that a couple people were retiring from the shade tree department. So uh, that gets back and I'm like, all right, that's, that's where they are. That's where the people are. That's where the tree or horticulture industry is. Yep. I don't know any better. I've never seen it. I've never seen And then maybe just not being aware of it. Like if I tell you, um, look for a red car in the street, you're probably going to see a hundred red cars, but if you're not thinking about red, you're not going to see them. Yep. The same idea. If you don't know about it, I've probably seen a bucket truck before. Probably seen. Just didn't. No, nothing. So, um, I just go there. Just go in and uh, I sign up for a job. You know, like yep. here is an application. <clears throat> they call me back. Have a deep com- kind of like this, a deep conversation with the director, pretty much like the superintendent yep. of the county. And we did go deep. It was just, and now that I look at back on in hindsight. He did, well, he was interested in the story of my life, death, this, that. Wow. And I didn't, I thought it was normal because that's, that's my first job interview. Yeah. I've always done landscaping, but I've never went to like an official place to sit down and be like, hey, w- what do you want? Right. What, what, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So yeah. I assumed it was normal. Um, and he was like, all right, well, well how are you? You don't, you have a CDL? I'm like, no. He's like, oh, we'll take care of that for you too. Okay, whatever. So it was like, all right, uh, same thing. Like, okay, when can you start? Two weeks. Went back to Claire Cantor, Summer Speed School. Like, <clears> hey, <throat> I think I found my purpose. I know this is what I want to do, but I don't want to leave. I got to go. Yeah. And her, her thing was, you 100%, I'm not happy that you're leaving, but you need to go. The only thing you have to promise is that you always come back and support the school. Absolutely. Done. Done. Yeah. Like, yep. of course, it's my home. Oh, cool. yeah. You know what I mean? Awesome. So, uh, and I don't know how you want to segue into the next one, but yeah. that's, that's literally like the beginning of like, this. So is that the County? Like you're, that's your job you're in now. Uh, or you changed? So I went, I was at union County DPW shade tree department okay. for three and a half years. Yep. And then found out you can make more money working for a township. Okay. So I ended up going to Melbourne okay, uh, which after that. So same principle, like I heard about it, talked to a couple of people went to multiple towns for, uh, you know, putting applications in yep. and Melbourne's the only one I called back okay. and then it was kind of the same process. Cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, I mean, if you're going to keep, if you, if you have more to unpack in that strain by yeah. all means, but I just, I, yeah, I'm no, going to, yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, I, let, let's, let's put it back to where you can ask a question out of that mm-hmm. because I know I just kind of just, no, it's, you know. I, I think it's important and I'm, yeah. I'm learning stuff. Like, yeah. I think this is good. And, and what's cool is, you know, people see you, they know you, you know, um, you know, you bring a certain energy, certain vibrance for life. I think it's important for people to understand. Um, first of all, two things. One, um, it's an outcropping of, of the struggle, in my opinion. Like, that is a big thing. You have a, you have a zest for life, a vibrancy for life. But why are you so passionate about the trade? I think it's evident. You just spelled it out. And I think it's important. It was important for me to like hear it again. I say like hear it again for the first time kind of thing. Um, but also for people that know you as Brick, either on social media or at a comp or at, you know, ITCC or whatever, 
you're engaging, you're grabbing, you're talking, you're having these conversations. I think it's, I, I think it's cool that, um, that that passion is rooted in that whole story. Like that, that's what that comes from. Yeah. You know? Oh, just to add to that. So yeah. the, which is funny. So the root, <laughs> the root of how I'm in, in, in the industry, it's a story that I told. Mm-hmm. It becoming, I think, is it fair to say passion and purpose are the same thing? And I mean, they're you, closely enough. They're, they're synonymous. You know, there's, okay. I'm sure if we wanted to get technical and break down definitions, yeah. you know. Okay, you know. so uh, the reason why I wanted to articulate this quickly is because the calling showed up and I went. Okay. But the passion or purpose, I knew it was going to be in there. Mm-hmm. But it, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it, it became a thing over sure, time. It, sure. But I had, all of us have to have, to do the work in order no for it to turn into passion or purpose. Right. You know, and I yeah. feel, and that's, and um, I struggle with hearing people say like, oh, when you find your purpose and when you find your passion, and that's the thing. Like, just, again, it's being personal, but <clears throat> I'll tell you right now from my personal experience, that's a bunch of baloney. That's mm-hmm. not how it works. Yep. You got to put the work in and, and you might even put work in, in a lot of different, uh, experiences, different industries. Sure. hundred percent. Yes. Right. Yes. Before that, you know, becomes a thing. Yeah. And fortunately, even though the sound, the story doesn't sound fortunate, but fortunately the common theme in my life turned out to be the passion in the common theme. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I, I didn't, it wasn't like I was doing trees to fulfill the void. And then I ended up in welding or, or <laughs> you know, right. That, you know, no, it, I get it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It segued know? perfectly a ton. And I, I think it's important to connect this back to the conversation you and I had with Mark Chisholm. Um, he, he said the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he grew he up in the industry exactly. and said the same thing. He's like, look, this didn't just, it just didn't happen. Mm-hmm. He put in the work and a passion and a purpose developed. And I would say the same thing with me. And we'll get into this when we tell my story, but just to, a little quick, like peel back the veil mm-hmm. was I just, I was just looking for work, you know? Yeah. And one of my friend's dads was an iron worker. And when they were laid off from the union, he climbed trees for a guy. And I was like, bro, I need work. And he's like, yeah, come be a ground man. Well, you know, I mean, okay, fast forward 40 years later, I wasn't thinking about my passion while I was stacking branches and loading trucks full of wood. Definitely not. You know what I mean? So I think to some degree, those type of quotes and this culture, look, Instagram's a great tool, but when you watch life in 30 second clips, like even the videos Ben puts out, I mean, you guys can't see Ben, but he's right over here. Um, It's amazing. He's got cameras everywhere. He's changing angles. It's fast paced. I mean, it looks, it looks sexy. Beautiful. I want to do that. Yeah. Well, when you come out on the tree crow, it doesn't move at that pace. (laughs) No. no. And And, and look, those of us that do it, that do have a passion for it. I do love it. That job that he videoed was, was amazing and fun. And I enjoyed the crap out of doing that. Working with my son, like there was nothing wrong that day. Like everything went well. But I think we do it. We do the young people coming into any trade. This isn't just for our trade. We do them a disservice when we say to them, you know, land somewhere and they think in 30 or 90 days or even six months, even a year. Like I've seen people come in and they'll do a full year and they tap out and that's fine. It's not for them. This is not for everyone. But it may not click in your head right away anyway. If you're enjoying being outside and, and you enjoy the, the different things we do each day and you, you realize there's the physical, there's the biological, the way yeah. trees work, the way they plug into the environment, like, and you can, you can develop a passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I just think it's really important to pause there and just, you know, anybody listening, it's like, I don't know what my passion is. There's a chance you may be on it and in it um, like, and like it, myself, yeah, yeah. and it yeah. may even be, and this is what I love what you say is it may be just maybe you're missing the self development component, mm-hmm. right? You know, work is work. You know, work is work. Yeah. Whether you're slinging mud or you're 
doing tree work or you're you're in a cubicle hammering out code, like whatever it is, work is work. We have to provide for ourselves and our family and be a functioning member of society. And it can be drudgery. Yeah. You know, there's days I wake up, I'm like, another day. You know, I, <laughs> it's kind of wild. I sling my lunchbox over my shoulder, grab my coffee cup and my day bag or whatever, and I'm out the door and it's like, I've been doing this for 40 years, you know? <laughs> yeah, and there's days yeah. when it's like, here we go again. Hey, honey, I'm home. Out the door. Here goes the lunchbox. Here we go again. Like, yep. I don't think I would have lasted this long if I wasn't passionate and right. I had a purpose. And you know what? What's interesting to me is the people component yeah. is a huge part of it. Oh, yeah. It's not just the work. No. It's bonding with the crew. It's being plugged into the community, community. right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's completely different. But when I show up at an event and I say, like, you, you said something pretty powerful. What did you say when you walked into school? When you I, walked into school and you saw the kids and you said, I. Uh, what do you mean? What school? Like, the, when you went back to the. Oh, I'm, I'm home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Same. And it's very and, different. And, and, no, very, yeah, different situation. Same. Quite close enough, but yeah. close enough to when you walk in, there's a comfort. Yeah. That, like that's Todd walked in, we're boys and all. What, but yeah. what, like, he resonates on a, on a frequency, yeah. just like Mark, right? Like yeah. high level performers, deep thinkers about work, about our craft, about life, about bonding, families, nature. But sometimes we, we separate work from that. Yes. Yeah. And that's, I think it's a mistake. Now there's situations where people at work can be difficult. Yeah. Not that you'd know it. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. I digress. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean that's okay. So yeah. you just gonna tie back to the uh, to the job. So now you're at it's Milburn. Uh, well, Union County. Now you mean? Yeah, present, like presently. No, I'm saying you left the county yeah. and uh, you. Uh, yeah, I left county after three and a half years. Yep, and you uh, went to, to Milburn. Milburn, yeah. but I. I want to drive home a point though okay I, yeah I, do I, it yeah no no yep. sorry, yeah so the important thing is i unknowingly you know i'm like hey man this is where they're at yep this is what this is what you do and yep. you do work luckily i wasn't aware of it at the time but luckily the top three guys um it would be you know like it was a uh, Bo, um kevin and mike were the top three guys and luckily they were Three climbers from the private industry ah. and went there for like the retirement and the okay yeah, yeah yeah so here I show up yo I want to be tree climbing I, I found my passion I found the thing I found you know I yep. I, found, I know what I'm doing I, yep no hindsight not at the moment but for the next eight months more or less my life was a living hell and living hell in the aspect of all I wanted was to climb I came here to climb right. But again, hindsight, but their whole thing was everybody says that. Everybody, everybody says it. You really want it? Go put the cones out. You really want it? Go open the chainsaw. You really want it? Learn how to rig. Every, every aspect of this job, chipping, raking, name it, it better be masterful if you want to learn how to climb. You know what I mean? I want it. I want to fight them. <clears throat> Legit, being a young kid. Sure. This, this is BS, man. I, sure. this, they're, they're purposely messing with me. They're trying to sabotage everything I dreamt of. Everything. I was pissed. Luckily, my stepfather was in the picture, and he would be like, you bite your lip, dude. This is how it works there. They have a reason for what they're doing. You got to bite your lip and put time in, and then you'll find out. Yeah. Can I interrupt and ask a question? Absolutely. Because, and hopefully I cannot lose my train of thought. <laughs> What is it? To much who is given, or much, what am I saying? Must be is given, much is expected. Okay. Right? Something yeah. like that. I, okay. you know, so, I, I so what I'm, what I'm, and maybe I'm using the wrong quote here, but my point is this like, if I have a guy come in new yeah. and he says, I want to climb or yeah. I want to use that chainsaw, yeah. I'm going to assess his ability to handle responsibility with a small responsibility. Okay. Wait. Right? So I'm going to go, hey, learn how to run the rake. It's a okay. joke. Wait. And, yeah, and learn how to run the, learn how to run the wheelbarrow yeah. and then I'm going to ramp you up. And if you can then do that and handle the saw and then run ropes for a climber and carry his gear and help him get in the tree and set lines, then you, 
do you is that a path they set you on and in hindsight are you still mad about that path or are you <laughs> glad they did, did that so so good you said it perfectly yeah. uh, so um i'll put you on the spot and be yeah. like who you are now and how you do it yep. understood but go back 35 years or yep. just go 31 when you yeah, first started yeah. your business yep did you have the same mindset of how to integrate new workers that wanted to climb right on first first day old school mindset no i think yeah. my mindset so my mindset was more that way then probably <clears throat> where i was going to make them earn it more mm. i've learned how to fast track people now yeah no that's fine so yeah. my point is the guys that you know you remember i got yeah. in there 2002 yep that those guys are from the eighties, right. climbing in the eighties. Right, 80s. so they're older than me then. Uh, yeah, because um, I'll be yeah. sixty. They were. Are, what are they so now? Actually, they're just a little bit older than okay. you. Okay, yeah, yeah. sixty-two, so, three, yeah, four. Let's go under, under, yeah, see, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, my point is that old school mindset yep. is what I was introduced to. Yeah. So, um, that's first and foremost. Okay. Uh. O old school mindset, but also like old school climate systems, old everything. So it wasn't Blake's hitches and taut lines and exactly three strand taut line, but yeah, no, uh, not three strand. Okay. I was able Rated. at that point safety blue. Okay, safety, yeah, right, safety yeah, blue. Yeah. But um, so with, with to to your point, um, at the time, no, I wasn't happy about it. But in hindsight, I'm happy. So it kind of goes back to the person uh, personality and um, the way things work now. So personality, you got to remember my life, and I, and I say this with respect to my family, but my life sucked. It sucked being a deaf kid, the only deaf kid, the whole nine yards. So when it comes time to embrace the suck, I got no problems with it. Right. It's easy. Been there, done that. That was my life. It wasn't just a thing I did. Exactly. This, is, this was, I was living this on the daily. Yeah, I right. was just mad because I wasn't allowed to climb. I gotcha. So when I talked to my stepdad, my stepdad was like, listen, bite your lip. It's the system. It's the way it works. We'll see what happens in a little while. So I bit my lip and I did everything they told me to, to the 10th level. Like, you're not about to tell me I didn't put the cones out right. You're not about to tell me I didn't rake the lawn off well enough. You're not about to tell me I didn't chip right and keep it in front of the chipper clean. You're not about to tell me that I didn't rig that piece perfectly. Like, I took it to the next level to the point of like, yo, this suck that we're dealing with right now. Like, you know, this suck. Yep. It's nothing. Yep. Like, compared to all the loneliness sure. and the part of not wanting to be here anymore, now doing this, this is easy. So here's a quick, just quick aside. I'm curious, how did they treat you like as a dude? Was that tough or was no, there one? No. Or, I was a dude, so. Like, was there a couple guys that were good? Like, were they good to you? Or were they just like trying to really just no, put you through? So like, it was, they were never, so it's funny. One of them was, um, but he has, again, you know, based on what we understand now, yeah. he obviously has a lot of inner issues sure. that he has to deal with. But he was definitely brutal and okay. not, you know. Yep. Um, and I won't put names to it. Just no, you know, that's, respect, no, I don't like expect he, you to. One yeah. was not. Yep. One was a laid back, chill guy. Yep. Um, he's actually the one where I learned all. Uh, he was a bodybuilder. Oh wow. Na cool. Natural bodybuilder. Nice. He was adamant about not using steroids. Super laid back. Um, patient. You know, but yeah. still had the same like yeah. Like if I made a mistake in a tree and came down in a bucket, he would wait for me to get out and be like, "Hey, you, you forgot that nub." And I'm like, "Well, why didn't you tell me? Why should I tell you? Go back up and go get it." You know, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> son of a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah. then the, uh, the other one, um, was kind of, kind of like, yeah, the two of them are kind of similar, like laid back, but more of like, listen, they, we've heard this before and I get it now. Yeah. I get now I get it, you know, in the position I'm in, but I, I get it now where it's like, you hear it, but who's really willing to embrace the suck on the basic level. Yep. Like the ground, like, because think about it, what, now I know what they were teaching me was to understand everything so that when I am unlocked, yes, I understand everything. I know what I need. I know what to tell this person. So, you know what I mean? Like you can't. I do. And to me, the biggest difference nowadays is like back in the day, they wouldn't communicate the why. Yes. They would exactly. just like do this. And yes. you're like, yeah, but I want to do that. Whereas now you bring a guy and you go, listen, if your ultimate goal is this, I'm going to assess a couple of things. One, I want you to have full understanding of what the guys that are going to support you go through mm -hmm. in terms of managing your debris and brush and ropes and things and like that. You need to know how to rig and run ropes for them so that you know what expectations are when it's your turn to be on the other end of the yeah, rope. Number absolutely. one. Number two, it's like I'm also assessing over the next three months, 
can you just be on a crew and grind and last? Because in my world, as a, as a business owner, I have a lot of times where guys come in with that same vim, vigor, and passion and flame out. You flame out. They come in, I want to climb, I want to this, that, blah, blah, blah. Put them in, yada, yada. Three months, six months later, nine months later, they're out of the industry. Yep. I mean, I've taken multiple guys and crews to shows and crane schools and all these different things you do, and all of a sudden, bada bing, bada boom, they're out. So yeah, yeah. it makes you a little gun shy. So in some ways, you're, you're kind of assessing their ability to, their stick to itiveness. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. I like that word. That's yeah. it. That's so, it. And so that maybe that's part of it. And and one hundred percent. And like I said, hindsight, I realize that um, it's, it's like a blessing in disguise kind sure. of a thing. But then when it's my turn to be the leader, now now I, I'm only just, I'm new in in the actual role yeah. of having a new person come in that kind of a thing. Yeah. And I've learned like I went the other way. I'm like nah, like I. I went through the ringer. I don't need to put you through it. I'm still stern and strict about the standard, yep. but I'm going to be laid back about it and be like, yo, this is how it works. Just trust me on it, but I'll give you a little taste of everything. So this way you're like, all right, I had, it's not completely sucky. I get to, you know, right. use the chainsaw or whatever, yep. you know, but then in that, I also found it's almost like they can't appreciate it because they, they didn't earn it. Yep. So, you know, so it's a balancing act. It's, Exactly. I was just going to say, right? Exactly. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say. So we, we've, we've pretty much tracked your story. Like, how did you get into Trey? Mm -hmm. And now you're like the new guy on the, on the crew. You're going through this whole like old school, you know, I would call it like hazing, almost initiation. Right? Definitely. Okay. Yes. So, and just for the audience, just, and I told Brick I was going to do this. We, um, this is what Brick and I do. We talk and man, zip, we've gone through an hour. We haven't even got to how did Brick get into competing? What has his competition career been like? You know, he had challenges along the way and then won, you know, back to back state titles, represented our chapter at ITCC last year, is going to do it again this year. We're super proud of him, love supporting him, love being his friend. It's, it's fun. Um, got to take your daughter out there with you, which was cool last year. Um, but, we think what we're going to do is we're going to land the plane here. I'm going to ask Brick a little closing question about new people coming in. And then we're going to pick this up and do another episode down the road where we kind of get into your comp career a little bit. Right. And we kind of walk through that, what that was like and what that process is like and advice you can give to climbers trying to navigate that, that space, right? that, yeah. that competition space, what that's like, the benefits of it and things like that. Because, mm -hmm. Quite frankly, we feel like a, a lot of our listeners are probably in that in that mindset. Yeah. Right. Agreed. So we got the origin story of all that stuff, literally from childhood all the way up to you figure out that tree's gonna be a thing. You're in the township now. You worked for the county for three years before, two and a half years. Uh, yeah, so I'm mean, I mean, at county three and a half years. Three and a yeah. half years. And then and it, that's where the, those guys are. So what uh, the, okay. the initiation. I got you. Yeah. So Brick had his hazing, his initiation. So what I want to say is like, because we have similar experiences because I've been doing this at my place for so long. Um, and each generation has a little bit different way of, of participating in life, of learning, of achieving. So two, two questions really like, if there's a set of words, and I don't know that they're different or the same. Number one, and this is a little cliche, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you're able to talk to the brick at the age you were when you entered that county job, what would you say to him that would help? What things would he need to know? And or, similar or different, someone that's young coming into the industry that shows up, say, at my door, or in at your case, in your door, you had a summer kid this year, right? 16 came in. Do do. Yeah. 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 Great. Comes yeah. in and he's full of, I call it like piss and vinegar. He's yeah. young. He's got that young energy. You know, I have my son working for me. Yeah. So what, what would be, you know, the two or three important things of counsel, bits of advice you would give to that person. So it's young brick you're talking to and, or young person coming uh, in guy, girl, whatever. Would those things be the same? Yeah. And if so, what what would you say to those people? Yeah, uh, right off the bat, they're, they're the same. Okay. Yeah, young book and the new the newcomers. Yeah. So definitely, definitely the same. Mm -hmm. Um, my my stepdad Gary, 
with you know, what I was talking about before. He's the one that, you know, was like, bite your lip. There's a, there's a way and a system where you're at. You need to bite your lip and understand how that works before you can speak your voice. Okay. That was kind of the mindset. Yeah. I wanted to speak. Sure. I was taught to speak. I was born deaf. I was like, no, you're going to yeah. speak for yourself. <laughs> right. But he helped me understand that you're going to have to earn, put time in and then earn the respect or trust of the people you're working with before you can speak up. So that, I mean, I, almost like, I mean, it's still hard because I'm a young kid, and it's, but almost like this, it was enough to have a mindset of being focused on, and now I realize, but the craft, the work, the, what they're telling me to do, do it the best of my abilities with a great attitude and the whole nine yards. Yep. So it would be very similar to what he told me is what I would tell young Burke or okay. the newcomer. Cool. Like, listen, you have to understand that you're coming into a new place, regardless of what industry, you're coming into a new place. You don't have a voice. You can't have a voice. It doesn't, it's just not possible. Yeah. You cannot say, this is who I am and this is what I want. Like You need to come and understand how the structure is and how the place works and then really become a, a student in how it works and all the different aspects to it. And when you do that really well, then now you have something to stand on and now you have the beginning of a voice. Yep. So if you really, and then we're just strictly sticking to trees, but if you're good at, and, and again, people look at it as like chipping, as like, you just chip a brush. You know, and I know, I don't have to tell you, but I'm just going to tell the listeners, but we're talking, when you drag brush to the chipper, that's a monster, right? Yep. That monster is, is, you know, a machine, and then there's an area around that. Like, your job is that area. Yeah. So it's not just brush. Like, it's not the idea of chip. It's the idea of what needs to go in, how much room do you have left in a truck, you know, because now you're on a second job. Yep. You know, do you want, it? does this log go in, or do you leave the log out and save it? And, you know, keeping the front clean with the rake so nobody trips into the chipper, yep. you know, uh, being responsible. Are you throwing the rakings in the machine? <laughs> right? <laughs> what size do we stop? Are there pebbles in there? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, but yeah. listen, it, if you really want to master the craft of that and then have something to stand on to so speak your voice. Yeah. That that's the stuff you know. That's just that's the the advice and stuff I'm talking about. It's like you have to understand, and it's, you have to be okay with you're nobody. Yep. And I think that's where my stepdad would tell me, "You're nobody. You got to go." And they're telling you to do something, and you might not like it, but you're nobody. You can't say anything. Right. So essentially, create yourself to be somebody. So when you speak up, they see the work ethic that you've been putting in. They see the results of your work ethic, and if it's been good, they're gonna listen to you. Yep. But if it's been crap. Nobody's going to listen to you. And you don't deserve to be heard, in my opinion. Yeah. Now, this is me talking to my young self. Yep. And the newcomer. With that being said, times are different. I went from old school and that kind of stuff, and times are different, but the principle, principle is still the same. Sure. The principle is you are nobody when you come in. You, and kind of very similar to the person I'm dealing with now, he, he full commitment. I'm not going to college. I'm in the industry but he sees the glamour of the climbing part of it. But I, and I, I full disclosure warn his mom and himself that that is not how it works. That's what you see. And it, it's, we do have those days and moments and experiences, sure. don't get me wrong, yep. but for the most part, yeah. that is not how it works. There's a lot of suck involved, first of all, yep. and a lot of it could be the most basic, ba uh, basic level things. And at, at simple, I was putting cones out to create a safe uh, drop zone and work environment. But if you can't do that really well, you're not going to be able to climb really well. And that, that is, um, yeah, and it's me talking to me and that. So th first, I can hear it already. Like, well, yeah, but I just want to climb. And it's like, I hear you, but you have to trust me in what I'm saying. If you can't do that well, you're not going to climb well. Mm -hmm. And if you can't climb well, what's going to happen? You're going to be in a situation where you're not safe. What happens when you're not safe? Yeah. For me, it's, it's like as I'm, um, and to me, what I hear is this is life. Like in any relationship. I meet you at a place the first time we met, whatever. There's no automatic rapport. Rapport is built and it's built on trust and it's built on me somehow supporting you in a conversation and you doing the same for me and it's banter and it's back and forth. Well, in a work site, it's the same thing. You're trusting me with a task. I'm executing it to the highest level of my ability. You trust me to do more now. I'm assessing when I say things like, you need to learn to run the wheelbarrow. It sounds very old school. But if I watch you do that and I go, man, he had that down or she had that down, 
Now I'm like, okay, listen, here's how you run the chipper. And we go through that and you feed and you're safe and you're operating from the right way and you're managing all the things you just talked about. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're, we're investing in, in a relationship, it's a work relationship. So, and, rooted and, in trust. Yeah, 100%. And, and to one thing I was going to add to that conversation of young yep. Brick and the newcomer, yep. including what you just said, is because once again, there's always, and I'm sure you know this, and I'm just going to say it for the listeners. Yeah, man, do it. We're talking about young kids or newcomers, but we say what we're saying to yes. them, and it's still like, yeah, but, yeah, but, no, but, but, but. Which is, no, I did the same thing. Sure, I get it. Of course. So the thing that I wasn't coached through because the, the, the guys that taught me, the thing that they didn't have was um, coaching me through personal development so I could become the better person in general that has a better work ethic. Like, and when I say better person, it was a principle, all the stuff that we always talk about, character, integrity, principle, you do that, that helps you with the work ethic. And then you do a good job on the work ethic, then you do good, like you said, you do good here, then you get more responsibility, more, and then it leads to climate. Um, and the time frame could vary depending on the ability to pick it up. But to drive home the point is you cannot, can't have that without having the, like the kid myself would say, yeah, but, and I'll be like, yeah, work on yourself. And go, I did. Okay. What, what did you work on? Did you eat right? What kind of foods are you eating? Did you train? Did you exercise? Do you have a good relationship with your parents? Do you have a good, re- <laughs> and then the give, give them all- something to work on instead of just the, the trees because then it's, it works hand to hand or oh, hand in hand so. integrate integrate yes all right well i guess what we'll do is we'll yeah. wrap just in an essence uh for the audience for the listeners you know just wrap things up we'll call it a day we're going to revisit this i think periodically you and i'll have these conversations i, I, like I think it's worthwhile yeah. i think it, it brings benefit um, i certainly enjoy hearing your side of things always have i think that's why we resonate but Thanks, man. Uh, love, you, you know, I love you. you. Um, I love you too. Appreciate yeah. hearing that story again. Um, gives me a lot to think about, a lot to chew on, a lot to be grateful for, too. So, Same. appreciate you, man. Yes, All appreciate right? you too. All right. Over and out.